I think the hardest thing about engaging with young people is actually getting other people to see the young person for who they are and not see the behaviours. Just remember, these are kids and sometimes their behaviours aren't actually things that they're in control of and to give them that grace. The, the complexity of all the different issues and the different circumstances that the young people are facing, you really have to be um, guided by them and be so flexible in your approach. There can't be a one-stop fits all for, for young people. Adaptability, being willing to, to move what you, your goals, what you want to achieve. If a young person doesn't want to meet you in your office, then you go and meet them outside. If a young person doesn't want to talk to you but wants to play basketball, you go and play basketball. You adapt to what their particular needs are. Getting on their level, speaking in their um, language, um, is probably one of, to make them feel comfortable, because that's what we want to do, make them feel comfortable, not scared of us. Um, letting them know that we're here to support them. They need people who are going to be positive and who are going to believe in them, not people who are going to get caught up on the roller coaster with them. Listening to what they're saying to you, making sure that you're checking in with them, that you're actually doing what they want. Um, and working with their carers, working with their family, working with their friends, trying to get as many people involved as possible to try and get the best goal for the young person. Getting with these kids at an early enough stage to show them that really life isn't as bad as what they've seen, expose them to some good people and put some good supports around them. We make time for our own kids and these kids aren't any different. They're in our care and we've got to make sure that we treat them the same way as we would our own kids. The pull of their family is always going to be the most important thing. So if you can find people who care about that child, who have, can form meaningful relationships beyond your time and their time in care, that is going to be the most important thing for them. Because um, isolation is really, really toxic for young people. And then you think about how that compounds if that isolated teenager then goes on to have children of their own and then they become the isolated families that we get reports on all the time. The biggest challenges with preparing young people for leaving care are the fact that we don't have a crystal ball and you can't see exactly what's going to happen five, six years down the track for this young person. So you want to take into account as many possibilities as you could. It's really important to be on top of what that young person is entitled to in terms of health, education, aftercare services. So that's, I think, your responsibility as a caseworker to know that. Getting to know the young person and making individual plans for that young person that meet that young person's need is the most essential thing. And having all those things in that leaving care plan and letting the young person know that aftercare, that someone is still there and available for them. Just the importance of, of starting the conversations early and understanding that. Um, the preparation starts from 14, 15, 16, and it's ongoing. It's not just one meeting or two meetings, it's an ongoing process. You want to incorporate some of the things that they are really good at. For example, some kids might be really good at sport, so you want to make sure that that's got something to do with um, their leaving care. So whether it's a sporting club, um, piano, whatever it might be that they're interested in, we want to make sure that we're garnishing that interest and keeping that going as into their future. So I think having everyone's interaction, everyone's involvement, if you put a plan together that has everybody's opinions involved, then people are more likely to own that plan because they're a part of it, they're part of the decision making and they'll help it move forward. I think it's highly unrealistic to expect that these young people leaving care will have the full set of living skills needed and to be able to negotiate the wider community. We do have kids who do stay on with their carers after the age of 18 and that's that's the ideal goal. We'd love to be able to see them as actually part of the family. That's what they should be. For me, um, it's definitely number one is being flexible. Um, it's being um, open to look at new ways of dealing with young people. It's being open to looking at different ways of doing things. They're the expert in their lives and we really need to um, support them but not and guide them but not um, lead them. Don't underestimate the value of praise. They still need your praise even if they are 18 and out in the world and are coming back to you. It's really important to be praise them and be specific about the praise that you give them and really encourage them. Because you might be the only person who's doing that in their life. People will understand if you're honest with them um, and be realistic. 
don't make promises or say you're going to do things that you know you can't do. I know we live in a world where things come up and you might have to cancel, but for a very vulnerable young person to have a meeting cancelled or for it to be overlooked or forgotten can be a really kind of awful experience and they might not re-engage with you again. So really just be trustworthy and be accountable and be realistic. Letting them know that we're going to be there, continually there to support them um, and letting them be preparing them to make the next step into that adulthood and letting them know that they're not going to be abandoned and, and just I think it's that comfort that, that getting them ready to leave in the first place. I think it's always important to have a genuine interest in the young people and in the families that we're working with and to go beneath the surface and to ask the hard questions and to explore things as much as you can and to keep coming back to it if you're still not sure what's really happening. To having those, in, those uh, conversations and about the difficult questions and, and issues in their lives. So it might be past trauma, it could be about what are their goals in the future. So it's about really having those conversations. It's like you hear people about quitting smoking. You never, not many people can quit the first time, it might take 10 attempts, but you need to be there for them when they make that 10th and, or 11th and attempt that actually worked. Uh, the three things I think every case worker should have in their toolkit, um, I believe patience, uh, I believe the child's best interest, and think outside the square. Persistence. Um, teenagers are all about persistence, you know, you're probably going to get five fuck-offs before you get a nice hello. It's important to remember the young people that we're working with, and this isn't just a job. It's young people's lives that we are interfering with for better or for worse. And there's consequences to every decision and every word that we share with these young people. And so it's important to do the best we can with the time we've got. Oh, it's a, it's a great feeling um, to know that a child feels comfortable for you and to, to open up and talk to you. It's probably one of the best feelings in this role. Yeah. There's lots of disappointments. There's maybe, for every hundred disappointments, there are 10 highlights, but the highlights are the ones that you work for. The highlights are the ones that will keep you going for the hundred disappointments, for me anyway.